Hey TV fans, how's it going? Board now back with you and on this video I'm going to be talking about episode 1 of season 1 of the new Paramount Plus show Wolfpack from a spark to a flame. So full spoilers from the start. This is the new series from Jeff Davis, notably did Team Wolf, who the Team Wolf series, I should add, who I, I know that has its fans. I've never seen any of it myself. The biggest thing of note about it going in is that it stars Sarah Michelle Gellar in quite a big role, semi-retirement for a while now. So she, she was in the Netflix film Do Revenge last year, late last year, and now she's in this and... From all the advertising, she she has a pretty meaty role in this. Although she's not in this first episode very much, but the setup of it makes you think she's going to be in, in the series more. Full trip, and a fire gets set off, and a fire brings out all these different animals. Some of them are on fire, and a bunch of kids are are bitten and and injured. Infected survivors who we both focus on are quite a shy boy called Everett and a girl called Blake. So they both get bitten and we sort of know where this is going. They turn out to be werewolves. There's no surprise there. They've got certain markings. But their scars only really appear to them like properly and... Things start happening, like they start experiencing donation. Everett believed that then things aren't quite right. Blake seems a bit more in denial or not quite willing to face it. But they're the two main characters. Sarah Michelle Gellar plays like the arson investigator. So she comes in at one point and goes to the hospital to interview Everett. Her theory is that then it, it was... The fire was set on purpose, it was an arsonist, and she says it could even be another student. It could be someone who, who was on that bus. Brother and sister duo Luna, see what they did there, and Harlem. And their father has gone missing, who, who's a park ranger, and he's got caught up in the fire. And we find out they have a whole history, and they are indeed werewolves. And the two sort of pairings meet at the end. So this is the second time I've watched this. The second time around I got into it a little bit more like. I think it's hit and miss. There are definitely rough patches. And it's one of those shows. That, like it's an MTV production. And I really haven't been that excited by anything from MTV. TV wise since Daria in, in the late 90s so that so that sort of says something but the one thing you can expect from MTV shows is it's going to be very cheap there's not a lot of money thrown into it and that it is a certain kind of teeny style show and it seems like this is going to fit into that mold which doesn't mean that it's sort of all bad. I think if you can just accept that and if you can, if there's enough in the story and the characters and some of the the ideas to, to at least look past that and, and make it a, a decent enough show, then 
then it could be the show for you. If you can't look past that stuff, if it's too distracting, if it takes you out of the drama, then that's a different story. Like, this isn't going to be the show for you. Because, first of all, the effects are really bad. Like, there's there's a fair bit of CG in, in this episode. And from the start, you can tell... It's CGI fire, like when the animals come running out of the woods, you can see a bunch of them looking like CGI animals. The scars, when they first appear, there's some, you can tell it's CGI. There's actually a nice moment of blood splatter, like during that opening bit, which, which I did appreciate. That was quite well done. But yeah, the CGI pretty much is all... Yeah, cheap looking. And the standard of of acting, which tends to be the norm in this sort of teen style show, it's it's pretty bad. Like, it's it's not the worst I've seen. The brother and sister, Holland and Luna, they were like so wooden and models type thing. Like, everyone on, on this show is insanely hot. The young people, anyway. But, um,. And that's another thing, when Sarah Michelle Gellar shows up for the first time, it's like the personality level just really suddenly shoots up because she's on str- on sc- screen. <laughs> Even though she's it, like it's a simple little scene, you know, it's, she's not really... It's just them coming to reception saying who they are. Two leads actually are, are alright, I think. They're, they're not too bad. The, the one playing Everett... I think he's okay, but I think he's a little bit too pretty boy. Like, he sort of looks like a bit like he's, like, in in a boy band type thing or a boy group. And he, he, he kind of has that. And the girl I actually quite like. Like, she has a touch of the Michelle Williams about her. And we get a decent sense of her character, or how, like, independent, how rebellious she is. One thing they sell with her character from the opening scene on the bus is that she doesn't use mobile phones. She doesn't like them. She doesn't really do social media. It's contrast between the two main characters, because Everett is on the phone talking to his therapist because he's got, like, psychological problems. So that's just a nice contrast between them in that opening scene. And mobile phones are everywhere in that opening scene because once the fire breaks out, you've got the different characters checking their phones for, like, information on it. And you've got this bully character, Austin, who's being, like, a right jerk. He's... He's being quite aggressive towards the bus driver filming her and stuff just being really douchey so that's a good sort of contrast with Blake then she just doesn't do mobile phones and it's like the the extreme opposite to the other students on the bus I don't know how much that is going to play into the plot later but it's just a nice character beat for her and a way to like make her feel very different from the other students so that's something i appreciated brother has autism which is another thing about the show and one of the things that is a plus then they're using a a genre style show like this to look at modern day mental health when when it comes to like teenagers or pre-teens it's a younger brother so that's that's definitely something I approve of, and, and that makes it a worthwhile show to start off with. A couple of, like, really smart moments that I'll, like, flag up. The first one is, and this seems to really go to Blake's character, but when they're in the car, like, it's her, her father, and, and Danny, who's her brother, in a way because of the fire spreading, so out of town. And her father's is set up as like an irresponsible douchebag where he seems to put all the responsibility of looking after Danny on Blake's shoulders and immediately when she comes home like he's he's in her face straight away and whining at her swearing at her he's just a terrible dad the car with them is when like she's telling them go to a motel I know a really cheap one and the father's like, well, how how would you know that? And she's like, give you option A and option B. Uh, option A is that I went to, to the hotel room with a guy and, and we fucked. 
Or option B is me and Danny went to a hotel room the night, like, mother left us and you you got like ridiculously drunk and the selfish prick says like option a i'll take option a but that's a really funny like line from blake and and it definitely goes to a character like really clever moment is the moment with the abs with everett together in the house because blake's house has been set on fire but or, or or damaged anyway, and they start looking through it. There's this bit where he where he realizes that and then his abs are suddenly revealed, like they've suddenly grown within the last couple of hours. And what I like about that is, at first you think he's just like bragging sort of thing, because she's like, "Oh, graduations," but no, it's he points out that's what's happened. This has happened in the last couple of hours since the incident. So. That, that that's a nice little touch as well but yeah Blake's a solid character I think I like the relationship with Danny they have quite a good bond and they do this thing of like because of Danny's like autism he actually senses what's what's wrong with her or then there's something wrong with her because he points out at one point about her scars and that's when she goes in the bathroom to to have another look look at them, and so so that's 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 decent decent stuff. And as I said, I appreciate they are going into the mental health stuff because also it's set up that Everett has like a mental health disease as well. They have like a telekinetic type link. Blake to, to, to Everett more like she can see when he's in the hospital and she's sort of drawn towards him they can all run faster a dialogue I'll say so, so just sort of switching back to like Harlem and, and Luna I mean, in like a nightclub and from from the word go like when they're talking to each other they just cramming in all these like like references to them being werewolves like like it's a full moon of the month that sort of thing and uh, oh finding your pack because that's something the father says later yeah the father in one of the most cheesy bits of of, of the episode like he he thinks he's gonna die in the fire so he starts recording a message for the two of them which is just ridiculous he should be trying to save himself but he it's this like it's really cheesy over long message about luna he sit in and, and she'll find her pack someday and then he starts talking about how harlem is wanted to what get round to watching all these x-rated movies where we're where it's Oh, and it's so cheesy realizes in a very like soapy sort of way oh my god I, I actually want to live I actually want to have these experiences <laughs> strange isn't it you would have thought they would have wanted some sort of drama and like reve big reveal with these two being werewolves but instead they just make it so obvious from the start with like the dialogue alone and as I said the four of them the four main ones meet like in the woods they are drawn to each other and then that's when it's confirmed <laughs> in case you weren't paying attention their eyes sort of glow stuff here that then could could appeal and it could be without being like the most amazing show it certainly could be very watchable and enjoyable and fingers crossed more of sarah and michelle gather next week because that would be nice but yeah, that's my thoughts on episode one of Wolfpack. So I will return for episode two. Because why wouldn't I when Sarah and Michelle Geller is in it? But let me know what you thought of episode one in the comments below. Like and subscribe as always. Share me out on social media. And I'll be back with more reviews soon. Take care guys. See you later.